Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will look at the classification of carbohydrates. How can we classify them? Now we classify carbohydrates on the basis of their behavior on hydrolysis. Now what is hydrolysis? We are going to talk about two important processes here. One process is where I, I was talking about anabolic and catabolic pathways. So there is one process where you make complex structures from simple structures. There is one process where you break down complex structures to form simpler structures. So here we'll talk about two processes. There is one process, there is one method rather, where bigger carbohydrates can be broken down to give smaller carbohydrates. So that process is hydrolysis. What do we do? We add water. So hydrolysis means cutting down with water. So you give add water and it breaks down into smaller carbohydrates. The other process is condensation where you take out water, you pull out a water molecule and a bond is formed which gives rise to a bigger carbohydrate. So these are the two processes which we will be talking about very soon. Now it has been seen that different types of carbohydrates when hydrolyzed, they show different behavior. Some of the carbohydrates on hydrolysis, they give smaller compounds. Some of them cannot be hydrolyzed further because they are already the simplest carbohydrates. So based on their behavior, carbohydrates have been divided into the following types. Monosaccharides. Mono means one. Saccharides means sugar. So monosaccharide is like one sugar. So you cannot further hydrolyze it. Next is oligosaccharides. Oligo means few. So under oligosaccharides, you have di, tri, tetra, till deca. That means 2 to 10. So mono is 1. Oligo is 2 to 10. That means 2 to 10 units of sugar. And the last one is polysaccharides. Poly means many. So these are the three types of carbohydrates. Monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Now we will talk about each of them gradually. So let us start our discussion with monosaccharides. So what are monosaccharides? Mono means one. So this is going to be the simplest form of carbohydrate. So carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler unit of polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. So it cannot be hydrolyzed further. That means they are the simplest form of polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. So as I said, hydrolysis is that process where bigger or complex carbohydrates get broken down into simpler carbohydrates. So this is the process where you can say that bigger uh, units getting broken down or getting converted into smaller units. Now monosaccharide is the simplest form and that is why you cannot further hydrolyze it. So those carbohydrates which are the simplest form which cannot be hydrolyzed further are called monosaccharides. There are about 20 monosaccharides which are known to occur in nature. So some of the examples of monosaccharides are fructose, glucose, ribose, erythrose, glyceraldehyde. These are all examples of monosaccharides. We will talk about the structure and properties of some of the important monosaccharides like glucose and fructose. Now let us try to understand the processes dehydration, synthesis and hydrolysis because as and when we talk about uh, carbohydrates, we we'll keep talking about hydrolysis. So it is very important that you understand these processes. Now first we'll talk about a process called dehydration, synthesis. Now what is dehydration? The word dehydration in general means taking out water. So we often say right that uh, we should pre protect ourselves from dehydration that is we should protect ourselves from loss of water. So dehydration is nothing but loss of water. So this is this is the process where pulling out water to build a bond between multiple sugar units. So in this process what we do is 
we take monomers that is simple sugar molecules so we take monomers that is simple sugar molecules and polymers are formed polymers are bigger structures or complex structures then how do we form that we take out water and a bond is built between the two sugar units let us take one example here you can see the structure of glucose now both of these are structure of glucose this is the open structure and this is the closed structure or the cyclic structure now we'll get into those details later for now you just understand that these is the structure of glucose now if you bring two glucose molecules together what will happen you'll have one molecule like this and you will have another molecule like this so basically there will be one OH bond here again there will be another OH bond in the other molecule right so it will be somewhat like this let us suppose this is the OH of the first this is one glucose again there is another glucose this also has OH right and again here you have other structures now I'm not drawing the entire structure what I'm just trying to explain is when you have two glucose units combining with each other so what happens in the course of that process is this OH and this OH so consider these two so from these two H2O is taken out so if you take out H2O what is left this H will go this this is gone so you are only left with one O so these two glucose molecules will get connected by this bond so instead of two glucose molecules you will now have one sugar unit and this bond and this entire structure will still remain the same but now instead of two you just have one structure and this bond is known as a glycosidic bond we will talk about that bond also in, in even more detail but for now you should just know this is a glycosidic bond so this process is known as dehydration synthesis where two sugar units or two monosaccharides come together one hydrogen one water molecule is taken out and a glycosidic bond is formed due to the formation of that bond a bigger sugar unit is formed that is a polymer is formed so in this case this was a monosaccharide this was a monosaccharide but the result is a disaccharide because the result has two units of two sugar units basically so whenever we use the term sugar we often use it synonymously with monosaccharides okay so here this structure actually has two units of glucose so this is a disaccharide and this process is known as dehydration synthesis this is also known as condensation so condensation is another term for dehydration synthesis please please understand this process properly because throughout this lesson wherever you see that polymers are getting formed from monomers now you understand what are monomers monomers are always the simplest form of a biomolecule for example when we talk about carbohydrates monosaccharides are the monomers oligosaccharides polysaccharides they are all polymers so similarly when we we'll talk about proteins or when we talk about lipids or when we talk about nucleic acids everywhere the polymers will be formed from monomers and they will be formed by the process of dehydration synthesis or condensation so this process will remain the same take out one h2o and a bond will be formed it is just that everywhere the type of bond which is formed will be different so here this bond is known as glycosidic bond that is because glyco is related to glucose glucose is carbohydrate so that means it is glycosidic bond so now if you understand this process of dehydration synthesis then I don't really need to explain you much about hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is just the opposite of dehydration synthesis. So in this process we break the bigger molecule or we break the polymers back into monomers. Now a simple common sense if you want when you wanted to form the polymer from monomers what did you do? You took out one water molecule and you got a disaccharide now if you want to do just the opposite thing what should you do 
exactly you should add one water molecule so adding that water is known as hydrolysis so it is the reverse process of dehydration synthesis so what do we do here here monomers are formed from polymers and in order that monomers are formed what do we do we add water in this case the term hydrolysis means hydro means water lysis means to cut so to cut down with water so when you add water what gets cut down the disaccharide for example this was your disaccharide this was the glycosidic bond which was formed right now when we add when you add water what happens this bond gets broken down and you again get the two glucose units so this process is called hydrolysis that is with water you are cutting down the bigger molecule into smaller molecules so is these are these two processes very very clear to use because see because this is very important if you don't understand this process you are not going to understand anything which i'll talk about in the next couple of slides so please review recap the slide but get it into your head just understand it so dehydration synthesis is condensation where you pull out water to build a bond and rehydrolysis is adding water to break a bond thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.